It's an incredibly polarized topic. People either really love baboons or hate them. A lot of people in the middle who are ambivalent don't make their voice heard. So unfortunately for the baboons, the voice that we hear most loudly are the very small percentage of people who are anti. The basic thing about baboon matters is that the baboons come first. We're here to protect the baboons. We're here to see that they can exist. We're here to see that the animals are not killed uh, under the auspices of so-called management. We had a small victory recently when a baby that we rescued, Chloe, was released into a semi-wild sanctuary with her adopted troop. But these kinds of situations are the exception. They're few and far between. We've donated money to help build the second enclosure so that these baboons have a place for the soft release. If the release of Chloe was the highlight of the year, then the most devastating thing that we had to deal with this year was going into the plantations of Sabi and seeing the sheer volume of baboons killed through lethal management. And it was a really horrifying experience. You know, the public don't like seeing baboons killed. I think if you, if, if the public knew uh, the extent to which baboons have been killed, they would be sort of shocks. Conflict is happening everywhere. It's not just happening on farms and in, in pine plantations. It's happening right in our doorstep. I think with the conflict on the urban fringe of the baboons has been a big issue for many years on the peninsula. There are simple ways to try and avoid a lot of this conflict which have been neglected in the past. It never fails to amaze me that people choose to live in these natural areas. You know, they want to live in nature, but the minute nature intrudes, so whether it be a, a snake coming onto your property or the baboons coming for waste, instead of managing yourself and your home environment, you try and move nature further away. We're probably the only species on the planet that destroys our own environment willingly. It's the people and not the baboons that are the problem. You know, it's the people who leave rubbish lying around and that's just open house for baboons. I think it's up to every resident really to take just a little bit of responsibility and actually sort out their own backyard. So many of these problems are caused by waste, human waste. And everybody agreed that what we really need to do is manage the waste better. Uh, for some reason this seems to be an intractable problem and I can't see why because it doesn't seem to be rocket science. The education is very, very important, that people must get to know what baboons are, what they're doing, and also to learn something about their natural behaviour. One of the big drives of Baboon Matters is to try and get this education out there where we really try and control our waste management. Over the past 25 years, Baboon Matters has addressed many thousands of school children, um, post-grad students, residence groups, special interest groups, educating them around how to live with baboons. Our social media following has grown to many, many thousands of people that are standing behind us, giving a voice to baboons. They are literally wanting to create this landscape of fear. That just creates more separation, more aggression, and more anger on both sides. If you're going to be using these sorts of methods, you need to have uh, very strong scientific evidence to support it realize that the animals have an intelligence and a right to exist on this planet. Now they are one of our closest relatives. I mean, they are primate. Basically, at the moment, baboons are being punished for the sins of humans. And I think that's, that's completely unacceptable. If we could get public opinion to have an impact on, on governments so that we can change the laws for the better. Because I think if you have laws that protect baboons, people will be forced to think differently about baboons. There's so many things that Baboon Matters wants to do. We need to be an advocate for baboons. If you look at the conservation management plan, it's non-existent. There's so much that needs doing and Baboon Matters is actually quite small and it's, it's got very limited resources, limited time. In 2016, Baboon Matters travelled all over South Africa dealing with baboon interventions and concerns with baboon related issues. And based on this past year's experience, as well as our 25 years accumulated experience, we really do believe that baboons over South Africa are in dire need of our support and help. And we do need public support for our advocacy and our education programmes so that we can be the voice of baboons and carry on with our projects and our work. We need to have laws in place to protect the baboons. But for this we need money. We need donors. 
And you've got to watch the words that you use with animals, you know. It's, um, let's not use the word cull, let's use the word murder, okay? The animals perhaps can't protect themselves, therefore it is our duty to protect the animals.